so the question I want to answer today is, is calcifediol that much better than cholecalciferol, which is natural vitamin D? So calcifediol is a semi-synthetic version of the natural form of vitamin D. It's made in the lab. Uh, it's an altered substance to a certain degree. They altered some of the chemistry to make it uh, easier to be absorbed. So basically, it does not need to be going through the kidney. It can be activated right by the liver. So it is a little bit faster, and it does get absorbed a little bit better. Now, the reason why someone came up with uh, this version of vitamin D is simply because uh, they wanted to increase the absorption because there's so many barriers that prevent vitamin D from getting absorbed, like being obese, having hepatitis, a fatty liver, not to mention chronic kidney disease, cirrhosis, insulin resistance, inflammatory bowel disease, a leaky gut, hyperthyroidism, a magnesium deficiency, a zinc deficiency. But my thought is this, I like taking a pure natural vitamin, especially vitamin D, and you can easily just take a little bit more, take a thousand to 2000 IUs more, uh, make sure you have enough zinc and magnesium in the diet, and take it with a meal or take it with MCT oil. Some vitamin D products come with MCT oil powder, which will greatly improve the absorption. So my opinion is I would recommend calcifediol, uh, maybe more for uh, someone with a kidney problem, but for everyone else, I would recommend just getting the complete natural form and just take a little bit more uh, with some zinc or magnesium. Let's talk about why you're really deficient in vitamin D and why is it so hard to get vitamin D? Well, number one, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to get vitamin D from your diet, unless you have fatty fish every single day. So this is why we rely on the sun. Well, let's take a look at how much vitamin D you can get from the sun. Well, 10 minutes of the sun can provide a thousand international units, right? Actually, a thousand international units is very tiny, but you're only gonna get this 1,000 I use only if you live close to the equator, okay? And if you're young, the older you are, the more difficult it is to penetrate through the skin. Apparently the skin becomes thicker. And if you're not obese, the more fat you have in your body, the less penetration sun has through your skin. And if you have more light colored skin, the darker the skin, the more the melanin, the less vitamin D gets through the skin. And if it's in the middle of the day and you're lying down versus standing up, if you're standing up, the sun rays kind of get the top of your head, but they don't get the whole body. And of course, you have to have a healthy liver and enough bile to be able to break down this fat soluble vitamin. And uh, don't forget, you can't have clouds and you can't have pollution and you can't have any genetic defect with your vitamin D receptor, which by the way, is more common than you might think. And also if you don't have any gut problems, any inflammation, any past gut problems, because inflammation blocks the absorption of vitamin D. And lastly, if there's enough microbiome and you have a gallbladder, the microbes, the friendly bacteria in your gut, make a secondary type of bile, which helps you absorb vitamin D. So number one, we need uh, enough bacteria to make secondary bile, as well as the gallbladder to be able to store and concentrate this bile to help you break down this fat-soluble nutrient. So this is why so many people are deficient, and it's actually very difficult to get enough vitamin D unless you don't have a lot of these issues right here. Now, there's a very important relationship between magnesium and vitamin D that I want to talk about. In order for you to absorb vitamin D, you need magnesium because magnesium assists in the activation of vitamin D, both in the liver and the kidney. And so vitamin D is dependent on magnesium. And so if you're deficient in magnesium, um, that can lead to skeletal problems with your bone cardiovascular issues, mood issues, specifically anxiety and depression, inflammation, and even an increased risk of the metabolic syndrome, which involves blood pressure, blood, high blood glucose, cholesterol, belly fat. And I just want to clarify something. When I say that magnesium and vitamin D are interlocked, it doesn't mean that you have to take them at the same time. 
It just means that they have to be in your body as a reserve. So you have enough so you can your body can then take what it needs. So don't get concerned that you have to uh, go and take magnesium at the same time taking vitamin D. My point is that you just don't want to be deficient in either one of these because they're both uh, dependent on each other. Because just as magnesium is required for vitamin D activation, vitamin D also stimulates the absorption of magnesium. So they both work hand in hand. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.